backgrounds of trade talks, Doha was the first place where, where we said public health is more important than patents. Agriculture and exports of developing countries are more important than subsidies. This was all done in a tentative way. This was the first linkage between global trading activity and the imperative of development. In money and finance also, this is starting to happen in Monterey. And this is a very, very positive outcome in my view on which uh, we must build. A statistic, 70% of export earnings can come from agriculture to developing countries. But the subsidies in the north are equal to $1 billion a day worth of agricultural subsidy. Similarly, in textiles, we need advantage in developing countries of where our assets are. And Mike Moore once again went beyond this and said, what about import surges, import sensitivity tests? You add value and you get another 30% slapped on you. He said, this incoherence has to go. We need to talk about one society gaining from assets everywhere and thereby having a globalization not only of what is of advantage to me, which is markets and capital, but a globalization of opportunity. I was delighted to hear the permanent representative of, of the US, Negro Ponte, in the last statement he made before the conference. He said something which was very interesting and I think new. He said, look, we know this challenge is before us, and we know the ingredients and lineaments, contours of this challenge, but let us all be clear that above all, it is an ethical and a moral challenge. And that is the real fuel. Because if we, as in our shared humanity, do not share a human concern which is based on our sense of what is right, then you will run out of fuel sooner or later. What is going to drive this process is the sense that this is right to do. The rest will fall in place, provided that sense is there. Let me conclude by coming back to, to India a little bit more. The role of India in all of these issues is, uh, we hope, a useful one. We are a society which is a kind of a laboratory and a test case. A billion people is a test case for any of the, the, the global experiments you are carrying on. And I think the success of our region and of, of my country, which is the largest, largest in the region, in South Asia has repeatedly been, been emphasized in many documents now. Because the level of poverty in the world today is encompassed to a large extent, very large extent, preponderant extent in our region. India has been growing at a steady pace and uh, we hope that we will be able to shrink the, uh, the, the area of poverty and, and make this society uh, one in which we can say that yes, a minimum dignity has now been assured. One last point. This embraces everyone in South Asia. This is not an Indian point I'm making, although um, it was presented as, as something which belongs to India. I was walking around in the Museum of Natural History, and there apparently that museum, I contacted them later, I became a friend of the museum. They obviously conduct their writing which they put on the wall on the basis that the attention span of the average visitor is about 30 seconds. So what is it which you can say which makes sense very quickly? This is India, this is Korea, this is China, this is Japan. So they had done a kind of a distillation job on, on what a person who's standing around for half a minute or a minute, how can you shock them into a kind of recognition which they did not have before? This is what I read. And then I got a copy from them. It says, a list of Indian firsts. These Indian firsts, and many of them I had absolutely no clue myself. These Indian firsts provide examples of what previous civilizations have achieved. Dates are approximate. Domesticated cotton, 2000 BC. Domesticated chicken, 2000 BC. Dice, 2000 BC. Determination of sidereal time, 1500 BC. Chess, AD 100. Concept of planetary motion 
and the heliocentric universe, AD 300. And this reminded me of a quiz which I saw shortly before I came to New York in the New York Times. He says, who discovered who, the heliocentric universe? The answer was on a different page. And if you said uh, Copernicus or Galileo or whatever, you know, you were off by about 1,200 years because the correct answer was Aryabhat 380, which, which is there in the, in the thing. Abstract ideas in mathematics, AD 300, concept of zero, no date, because as long as written literature has been there, the zero has been there. Decimal system, AD 300. Atomic theories, independent of Greek ideas, AD 300. Plastic surgery, AD 500. Veterinary medicine, AD 500. Accurate calculation of pi, 87 and, and so on. India and the whole region, in my view, is today poised in a kind of experiment which the world has rarely seen. Great civilizations have arisen on the banks of great river beds whether it was the Nile, or Euphrates, or Tigris, the Yellow River, Yangtze Kang, Indus, the Ganges, and other rivers. But most of them have run into the ground and into the sand. But the two areas which are now rediscovering themselves, and coming up as civilizations, are the civilizations of South Asia and the civilizations of China. Why is this important? Because there should be some resources in a civilization's continuity which can be brought into play to make a cultural contribution to the world of a unique kind. And also because when it comes to pushing cerebral frontiers, it is a very deep well from which you can draw. Many remarks have been made on why Indian software engineers, and indeed in software engineers from South Asia, as I said, I don't see it in Indian terms at all. Why is it that they can so quickly adapt themselves? There is obviously a facility there. And I was watching a television program and <laughs> two people were going on about 40% of startups in Silicon Valley were from India and so on. And they were going into this phenomenon of Asian presence in all kinds of cerebral frontiers that are being pushed. And they mentioned many of them, materials, biotechnology, teleworking. He says, well, one of them said, well, these people are full of surprises. Why shouldn't they be able to do this if they can invent zero in the decimal system? The capacities of these, I have never believed in the Gunnar Mirdal kind of projection of these areas as permanent basket cases. I have always regarded these areas as, as areas which are going to contribute to the world civilization in a unique way. And if this contribution is not made, the world will be significantly poorer. Thank you.